Oh yeah, you hear that? I heard that one. Hey everyone, this is Jeff of Tal Flater Mouse. Today we're going to bring out the Scientific Mass Accelerator, which is totally not a firearm. Now, before you say, hey, I've seen this before, this is part two based on viewer suggestions. In part one, we tested out the De Laval nozzle projectiles. In this test, we heard the projectiles making a screaming sound, and viewers wanted us to launch them at a much further distance. And that's why we love our viewers. These projectiles come from a channel called Small Lave, run by Sar, our good friend, who's submitted many great ideas. And I would really appreciate it if you check out his channel. Let's try to get him over 1,000 subs. We can do that, right? In our first test, we were able to recover five of these projectiles. So let's give them another whirl and launch them again. Now these are basically a hollow projectile made out of solid brass and essentially shaped like a rocket nozzle. When the conditions are just right, these will scream through the air. Now we've added this indicator plug here. The purpose of that is to show exactly when the airflow starts occurring. Now initially these projectiles will be flying slightly above the speed of sound. At a certain distance they'll go from supersonic to subsonic and at that point we'll see the plug actually fall out of the projectile and it'll begin to whistle. One thing we want to prove is that the bow shockwave prevents airflow through the center of the projectile until it reaches a subsonic speed. For this to happen everything has to be perfect. It has to be launched at just the right speed not too fast and not too slow. Let's get out and test these things. You know, we're just going to go for center mass and see where they land. Okay, not actually going for accuracy but if they're accurate too that's a plus. Okay, I'm ready when you are. Alright, here we go. I'm ready when you are. Alright, here we go. Well, it wasn't exactly the whistling sound we hoped for, and we could see why. The indicator plug just never fell out for whatever reason. And like I said before, everything has to be perfect for this to work. And it just wasn't perfect in this shot. But it is stuck in the board there. It is bulletproof uh, ballistic paneling there. On the wood. This was actually sitting right here when we walked up. Yep. We did the board up, it fell out. But and Lots of pressure there. Even let's see. something that's designed to fly subsonic. Yeah. There it is. Go. Still. <laughs> Good to go again. Yep. Yep, not deformed or anything. Still got a giant dingleberry stuck in it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's move it back another 10 yards or so. Okay, ready when you are. There we go. Oh yeah, you hear that? I heard that one. That was cool. Obvious, it's pretty obvious where it hit. This one hit here. My point of aim was here. That's pretty good. I don't know why that one hit up here. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Uh, where did it go? Did it go through? It did not go through. It's not in there. Okay. Where? So, did it pop back out? It had to have bounced back somewhere here. Yeah. That was the difference between... Uh, 60 yards, this was 70. All right, everything worked out perfectly. Here it comes, and boom, that's where the airflow begins, right there. That's where it starts screaming. Everything had to be just right for that to occur in frame like that. I don't know, that may be the first time anyone's ever seen a projectile go transonic. We had one failure so far. This We're due for a failure, I'll, I'll tell you that. <laughs> that I can tell you. Okay, I'm ready. All right, here we go. Oh yeah, it worked again. Oh yeah. I gotta tell you, I was really disappointed with that audio from that uh, camera that was placed downrange. 
everything worked perfectly again on this one. And one of the big surprises was how accurate these things were. Again, Danny nailed it right in the center of the panel. Now, unfortunately, we lost most of these in the grass. They bounced off that ballistic panel and we never found them, but we have an idea where they are now. Okay, how far are we, 90 yards? We're 90 yards. We have two left, this is... Go. Okay. Now at first we didn't think this one whistled very well, but it was kind of a raspy whistle. It wasn't as crisp and clear as the other ones, but it still counts. Good uh, separation of the indicator plug and all that. Just wasn't as accurate. Veered off to the right just barely and ended up into our uh, backstop back there. Okay, let's explain what's going on here. Danny's aiming the mass accelerator so that the projectile will travel about at least six feet above the target. So we have a, a long, it'll still stay in, in, the, in the range and all that, don't worry about that. Uh, the range is almost a almost a thousand yards back there and these will not go that far it's, it's very safe okay I'm, I'm just curious how long it'll scream for okay I'm ready all right here we go oh yeah I heard it hit something out there it hit the berm it hit the berm And for our final shot, again we had good separation in frame with the camera, that's important. As planned, the projectile goes over the top of the target. And you may think because he aims so high, he'd be able to hit those trees back there. But no, it just kind of drops like a rock. The idea of a whistling projectile may sound really cool, but in reality the airflow trying to force its way through the center of the projectile is creating a tremendous amount of drag. I hope you learned something new today and thank you for watching and rating the video.